This is the Sportsmax Zone, and we are reviewing day three of the World Athletic Championship in Budapest. Three medals for Jamaica at the championship today, silver and bronze for Sherika Jackson and Shelly Ann Fraser-Price in the 100 final. And Hansel Parchment, the Olympic champion in the 110-meter hurdles. And that's where we'll start this segment, because uh, Parchment, as he normally does, um, gets left in the blocks, but ran very well for the last 50 meters to fight his way for a silver medal. Your thoughts on that effort today, um, given the fact that Holloway was so strong throughout the race itself? Hansel Parchment is the closest thing you can get to a god in hurdling. <laughs> he might not win many medals in terms of the gold medals, but when you put him in a final, you know he's going to deliver. And today, just watching him work his way over 10 hurdles from the back of the field, into a silver medal position, mm -hmm. I was I had goosebumps all over my body mm -hmm. because Hansel Parchment delivers. I mean, listen, this guy, nobody expected him to win the Olympics in 2021. He comes through and pulls off a remarkable victory. He comes back again today, you know, not looking particularly convincing in the rounds coming into the final and then runs mm -hmm. a season's best 1307 mm -hmm. to get the silver medal. What more can you say? The man is the man. He delivers. He yeah. delivers. I, I want to agree with you um, there, Leighton, because I thought even watching the race, even when he was so far behind after 30 meters, I still thought he was going to medal because of how how technically solid he is and how profound he is on big occasions like this. So given. Even with the hard work that faced him, I, I just knew that he would come back for a medal. Hansel's, Hansel's mental, ca his a capacity for working under pressure mm -hmm. is above par. Mm -hmm. Because, look, he's not the fastest hurdler in the world. He's tall, so it makes it very difficult for him to start with most times. Because by the time he unfurls that six foot five body, you know, most times he's behind at the first hurdle. But he always finds a way to get his legs turning in the middle of the race and gradually gets faster over each hurdle. Mm. And I think the ability to be able to do that and believe in yourself enough not to panic mm. speaks to his mental acumen in terms of executing that event. Yeah. Huge disappointment quickly for Rashid Broadbell, who was probably, well, one of the gold medal favorites for the race. Um, he fell over the weekend, so he, he crashed out. Listen, um, do you think he would have beaten Holloway today? I am not, I don't think. I know he would have won. I don't, listen, I'm not a soothsayer or a prophet or anything, but had Rashid Broadbelt been in that final, he's the gold medalist today. I was depressed. On, listen, I don't usually get too emotional over these things because you tend to keep yourself separate from, from the performances so you can actually objectively you know, analyze it and look at it and see what's there. But I honestly believe that if Rashid Broadbelt was in that final, he wins today. Yeah. You, know you agree with him, Ricardo? No. You don't? I don't. Well, first of all, let's start from the fact that I predicted Hansa Parchment to win this event, mm -hmm. and I predicted Broadbill to be third. Yes. There's a reason for that. Um, there's a graphic that we prepared that I want to have a look at in terms of the history of uh, Hansa Parchment in global championships. Mm. This is a young man who started by winning the World University Games in yes. 2011. Then in 2012, at his first Olympic Games, he wins the bronze medal against all odds, the first Jamaican to do that. 2015 world champ silver medalist 2017 in london finishes eighth in the final when omar mcleod won won the olympics in 2021 in tokyo and here he is with a silver medal in budapest he's had some injury seasons 2013 he had serious injury problems didn't compete at the olympics in 2016 either because of injury but when he's injury free and he suits up you know that you are going to get a hands of parchment who is ready for battle and who understands how to maneuver the rounds at a global championship. I am not 100% sure yet. Now, Rashid Broadbell is a tremendous talent. There is no doubt about it. In my opinion, Rashid Broadbell has the talent to break the world record and to run on the 1280. Well, that would mean breaking mm, the world yeah, record. Right. That's how talented I think Rashid Broadbell is. But I also think there's an aspect of championship running that Rashid Broadbell still has to learn. It is something called 100% focus. And especially 
especially in global championships when you have to go through the rounds you require that he is commonwealth games champion um, and i think when he won the commonwealth games title last year a large part of that in my opinion is that he was just coming off the disappointment of the world championship where he clattered into hurdles again and did not perform as well as we expected him to perform and i think that disappointment almost mellowed him, yeah. got him even keel for the Commonwealth Games. Plus the field wasn't as tough. Plus the field wasn't as tough, but it was yeah. still a, a high quality yes. performance. Yes. Yes, and he followed up with a win over Grant Holloway Twice. after the World Championships mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So the talent is clearly there. I am not sure if the complete understanding is there yet. 100% um, focus to go through global championships without what happened yesterday happening. There's another point I have to make quickly on this Rashid Broadbell issue. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes Times these things will work and other times they will not work. He raced on the 28th of May and then he did not race again until the Jamaican Championships on the 8th of July. Then he did not race between the National Championships and the World Championships. For me, in a technical event, it is always going to be risky when you take those long breaks between racing, especially when your return is at a major event. And yes, it worked at the national championships, but in my opinion, there was never going to be any guarantee that it works again at the world championships. And some people will say, well, yes, why are you saying that? He fell, it happens all the time. But then you have to also look very closely at the circumstances that may have led to what happened yesterday and that's just how I feel about the mm. Rashid Broadbell situation. Right, so, so here's the thing, again uh, this is becoming a problem now because I'm disagreeing with you. <laughs> that's okay. the, no, the, I love that by the way. The first point you yes. made I, I disagree with. Okay. The second point however is, is my belief as well. Yes. We spoke about this off air. You can't be going into a championship because I actually reached out to his coach mm -hmm. just a couple of weeks ago and I wanted to find out if he was okay because his last race before he raced, the day before yesterday, or yesterday, yes. was July Na 9th. Nationals, yeah. Right? July yeah. 9th. So, yeah. as Ricardo said, in a technical event, yeah. you need. That's five weeks. Yeah, or the more. competition is key to being, to preparing for these events because you, because of the, technical, the technicalities that are involved, you. Practice is one thing, but the adrenaline factor is com something completely different. And if you look at the race, what you saw, where he hit the hurdle, his trail leg dragged the hurdle down under his hip, which is why he fell, under his leg, which is why he fell. Mm -hmm. You know why that happened? Because he didn't race enough. Yes. And he wasn't race sharp coming into these competitions. You need to be able to have a few races in. Mm -hmm. Because the, every coach will tell you that Depending on the event, you need between five and seven races to get race sharp before any major championship. He's pretty much sat out yeah. for well, five we'll, weeks. We'll get to the part that you disagree with Ricardo. You've just talked about the part that you agree yeah, with him the, on. The, so. I, I, I don't disagree. I don't agree that he doesn't have he doesn't have the acumen to win right now. I never said he doesn't have the acumen no, to you're win. Saying, right 100 focus. No, you're I said 100% focus. I said 100% focus. focus. And when you don't have 100% focus in a technical event. Coupled with everything else I spoke about, there's always the chance that what happened yesterday yeah, but, can but happen. Where is the evidence that he's not 100% focused? Well, he's had a similar issue at the last two World yeah, Championships. Yeah, but last year was his first major. It was his and first this one is his second. second. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever he learned from last year, because we saw those improvements immediately after the, after that, at the Commonwealth Games. Really. Yes, and I'm, and I'm suggesting to you that because the Commonwealth Games came immediately after the Worlds, it was actually a good time yeah, for him to come. Yeah, because he was able to make It forced him to become a little bit more even mm -hmm. and a little bit more focused for that Commonwealth Games um, pursuit yeah. and led to him winning. I know it's an, this for me is a fascinating discussion, by the way. And I'm saying that because I, I, I understand what you're saying, Ricardo, but I don't think many experts had parchment ahead of Broadbell for this no. World Championship. You are one of the few that I've heard. 
Many experts didn't have Shakira <laughs> Richardson winning the women's I know, hundred. I know, I agree. Many I'm experts I'm didn't have Sharika I'm Jackson medaling. <laughs> I, I I don't consider myself many experts. Yeah. Um, Lance. I, yeah, I, get I, I, I like to look at things for myself and come to my own determination. Yeah. I tend not to listen to what everybody else is saying, and I yeah. tend to trust it's, it's still, my own I eyes know, and Ricardo, my own But it still instincts. would be hard to convince me that Broadbell didn't go into this world championship with stocks higher than parchment. But I'm not saying he didn't. So uh, understand what I'm saying here. I'm not saying that he does not have the talent. I, Clearly, he's run 12.94. Yeah. Yes. He is significantly faster than parchment this season. He is also faster um, than Grant Holloway this season. But in technical events, especially the sprint hurdles, when I'm predicting winners, I think a lot more okay. than just about what Okay, well, nobody would have predicted that so he would have fallen yesterday. So if he didn't fall and he raced in the final, are you saying that you thought Parchman would have finished ahead of him? Yes. No. Mm. We, we're not we're agreeing on that one. Not in a, not in a month of no, but it's, it's an argument. It's, but, a debate. But the, it's a debate, but the yeah. point I'm making yeah. is the same thing that happened in the first round or something similar can also happen in the final. Yeah. So, I agree. so when I'm predicting, I'm taking everything into consideration, the time between races, yeah. all of what that. What I think hurt him most was the fact that he didn't race leading up into the championships. Uh, and, and that's part of it, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. But yeah. apparently we have to move away from this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so congratulations <laughs> to Hans Parchment on... Big congratulations. Yeah, on another global medal. There were um, two other finals today with the Caribbean representation. Jaden Hibbert in the men's triple jump, Frederick Dakers and Travis Michael in the men's discus. Let's start with Jaden Hibbert and see how quickly we can get through this one, Leighton. Um, hamstring problem on his first attempt, past his second attempt, um, trying to do a third, just didn't work out for the teenager. Yeah, hamstring, grid one hamstring tear is what we're hearing. And if that happens... When your hamstring is done on, a, on an event like the triple jump or any, sp any explosive event, yeah, no, it's, that's it's, it, it's yeah. over. The thing is that what is unfortunate for him is that the, the winning jump was less than the 1770 he jumped yesterday in the qualifying round, which makes it very, very frustrating um, you know, for him because I, you know, it would be hard to conceive that had he been able to compete here that he would not have won. 1754 was it? Yeah, the, the winning the mark winning was 1764, 1764 from Lewis Fabrizango, right, the Tanzano. silver going yeah. to Martinez of Cuba at 1741, and the bronze to Napoles of Cuba at 17.40. All of those jumps were no, not, nothing that he would not have been able to achieve. So it's, it's quite unfortunate, but sometimes, as they say, the lead is not denied. Yeah. You know, maybe this is a year where he will take the time off, review, yeah. get stronger. Because as we know, he's still going through a growth spurt, according to his coach. Well, he's only 18. And he's only he, 18 he's still a junior, still he's still a junior, junior next, next year. year yeah. So, yeah. So, the Olympics are next year. The World Championships are in Tokyo in 2025. Maybe there is where he will shine. And, yeah. and happily, it's just a grade one tier. Yeah. So, it so should not keep him out. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, terrific men's discus final, by the way. Daniel Stoll winning another world title, 71.46 meters, a championship record. He did that on his final effort after the defending champion, Christian Che, had thrown 70.0 two to take the lead the throw before the Jamaican Frederick Dakers the highest placed of the Caribbean competitors 66. with 66 72 finishing in fifth and Travis Michael who I had as a dark horse finishing in 11th at 61 90 never got going in the final quick assessment Leighton um well not a surprise I mean I expected Che to win because Che has been more consistent this season than Stahl but what we know about Daniel Stahl is that he's a monster when it comes to these competitions. And as we saw in the final throw, he popped the biggest throw that he's had so far this year. He has that kind of championship medal. I'm not surprised that he pulled it off. I did expect Chet to hold on and win. But I think the top three, who was third again? Hmm. Alekna. Yeah, Alekna, right. Hmm. Those, uh, were, those were my top three, weren't they? Yeah. Because were I they? think, yeah, that's, yeah, but I picked Chet to win. Hmm. Um, the thing is that. Daniel Stahl is doing everything that Daniel Stahl does. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> 71 4, I mean, please. Mm -hmm. As I said before, if you're going to be contending for a medal this year, you're going to have to be throwing 70 meters. And that's exactly what unfolded mm -hmm. at these championships. Mm -hmm. 66 from Fred um, was good, but 
clearly not good enough, you know, to get among the medals. Mm. I would have hoped that he would have been getting into maybe 68 or 69s, would have given him more confidence but for going into next season, but mm. obviously it didn't happen. Yeah, the, the 400 meter hurdles, we have to rush through this. Yeah. Rashawn Clark, a world under 20 record, 47.34, a national record as well for Jamaica, beating Winthrop Graham's 1993 mark of 47.60. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, Winthrop Graham is a world and Olympic, Olympic medalist. medalist. Yeah, mm. yep. Levy. Listen, I spoke to Winthrop Graham in 2013 at the 20th anniversary of that record, and he was so disappointed that no other Jamaican had managed to go under 48 seconds, Danny McFarling being the closest yeah. at 48 flat. When this kid ran 47.85 at the national championships, it almost moved me to tears. I think the, 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 the reel went viral. Um, mm. Because you, you saw... You just said 10 minutes ago that you don't get emotional over... No, but I got emotional about this one. Okay. Because Winthrop is a... <laughs> I, I, Winthrop was my, is still one of my favorite athletes ever for Jamaica. Yeah. And, you know, when he and Machete and the rest of them got together back in the 90s, it was with a great sense of pride. Because, you know, we usually talk about the 100 and the 200, but never about the 400 meter hurdles. Mm. So to see someone do a, a discipline that Jamaicans were not known for was a big deal for me. And yes. it, it gravitated me towards the event. It's to this day still one of my favorite events. Mm. But I saw Russian Clark do that at the National Stadium and he called the World Junior Record. I thought he was going to break the record eventually, the national record, but not this soon. Yes. <laughs> but to see him chase Danny, um, Carson Varholm Var in the heats, and then when the flash time came across and I saw 47 or 8, I think it was for, for Varholm, I knew the record was gone. And again, I got emotional because this kid <laughs> is so special. Have, have, I, you, have you spoken to Winthrop? Uh, no, I'm trying. I'm going to call him tonight. Yeah. Let's, let's call Winthrop and hear what yeah. he has to say. And you just told me a fantastic story, Leighton, about Winthrop's wife, yeah. Yvonne Graham. She, yeah. lost, she lost her record yesterday to Adele Tracy, who yeah. ran 358. Um, 77, I think yeah. it was. Her national 1,500-meter right. record. Yeah. That's uh, the first Jamaican woman under four minutes. And she didn't make the finals, <laughs> which is ridiculous, because everybody in the other heat ran 402. Yeah. 402 won the other heat. So it, it, I don't know what rule makes sense, but hey, it's what it is. I guess we'll rule. talk about that at some point. Yeah, at some this, point. Yeah, but yeah. It's, listen, man, Russia and Clark, you are going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread in the 400 meter hurdles for Jamaica. Fantastic youth. I'm so proud of him. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know him that well. I know he went to camp. I don't know. That's it. Yeah. But I love his. I love him in terms of how he performs. Yeah, a, a few important things about this Rashawn Clark kid. Remember, he is the Austin Sealy Award yeah, winner from the Carifta Games, games yes, this yes, year. Yes. And I think that decision now to award him the Austin Sealy Award Justified. looks almost genius. Yeah. Um, but also his coach, um, because I think his coach, Akil Stewart, needs to take a lot of credit. His coach, Akil Stewart, coached Russell Clayton to the 2019 Women's 400 Herders Bronze Medal. He mm -hmm. coached Jaheel Hyde to a personal best in the 400 Herders last season and to the World Championship Final as well. Jaheel Hyde has moved on to Texas and is now working with Boogie Johnson, who is the coach of Dalila Mohammed, the former world record holder on the women's side. And now he has Rashawn Clark. So his coach is showing um, tremendous quality in the 400 meter hurdles. He's been around for a long time, Akil Stewart, yeah. and he hasn't got—he has not gotten, I think, mm -hmm. the kudos that he really deserves. Yeah. And so I thought it was important to mention that. Yeah, and I thought that move from Jahil that was not the right move at all. Because from my understanding, it was more of a family move though than it was a track and field okay, move. Fine, and and sometimes you make those. I didn't get that. I didn't know that part, but. Listen, if you look at the Lala Mohammed's camp this year, they have not been great this year. Yeah. The Lala has been struggling and last season. Just to wrap this segment, though, with the comment on Shadi Williams, Williams, the Barbadian, with a, a national record today as she advances towards a, a, a medal. 49.58, 49, third fastest 50, yes. going oh through to the final. Well, yeah. uh, and we spoke about well, this last yes, week. And I said I didn't know enough, but clearly now yeah. she's ready. She, and, she's and, in shape. And as I told you, Stephen Francis only needed to peak her once, once. and that was going to be at the yeah. World Championship. And from I saw her in the opening round, I knew she was going to break that national record. Hopefully, she can repeat in the final because there is a chance of a repeat medal. Correct me if I'm wrong, Lance, but no Barbadian, man or woman, has repeated as a global championship no, medalist. No, that I'm not aware of, no. 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 She could be the first. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. That's a, yeah. I missed that race today because, you know, when you're working and you're writing and you're thinking. But the thing about it is, um, yeah. it is 
that's a real, that's a big performance from her. It can, certainly was. Can I tell you something, Leighton? You're going to be missing from the set tomorrow if we don't go to a break. Like oh. <laughs> break time. <laughs>